Hey folks, this is Riker, bringing you a discussion on what is the best class in Diablo 3 Patch 2.3, which will lead into a discussion on the state of Season 4. Now, if all you want is a short answer, then that answer is, the best class is the Monk. That's your too long didn't watch version of this. If you just came to this video to know which class is best, then that's your answer. But if you would like an extended discussion on the current state of the game, and why we're seeing some rather alarming statistics, then keep watching. Now, one thing I need to immediately specify is the fact that the term best is so subjective that it is ultimately meaningless without further qualification. There exists no single objective measure of what makes one class better than another, but that won't stop people from using their subjective analysis to tell you why precisely a certain class is best. When I say that monks are best, I'm basing myself off of statistics specifically the distribution of classes on the Greater Rift leaderboards, and that worldwide distribution of data can be drawn from DiabloRank.com. Taken together, the data across every region and every size of Greater Rift group from solo to four player paints one undeniable picture. Monks are absolutely killing it this season. We're going to revisit and analyze this data in just a bit, but before that, I know you're going to point out a couple things. First off, the fact that monks are so overrepresented doesn't necessarily mean that they are better than other classes, it simply means they are more popular at the moment. Most popular does not equal best. The other thing you'll point out is that even if they are best at greater rifting, that doesn't mean they are the best at, say, speed rifts or other aspects of the game. Let's address both these points. First off, on popularity. Call of Duty is one of the most popular franchises in the world, but you would never hear me concede that it is the best first-person shooter. Still, I know a ton of Call of Duty fans that would argue with me. Again, what's best is subjective. We each have a personal yardstick. And even as a hater myself, what I do have to concede is that Call of Duty is the best FPS franchise at getting people to think it's the best FPS franchise. I love Unreal Tournament. But no one plays Unreal Tournament anymore. So it doesn't matter that I think it's the best FPS game ever if no one else agrees with me. I'll still have no one to play with. Also, Unreal Tournament is the best FPS game ever, you shut your face. Similarly, in Diablo, it doesn't matter if you think that the Crusader is the best class, because the stats show that most people play Monk. If you want to push the highest grade of rifts, the stats show that Monk, Barbarian, and a few Witch Doctors are the only competitive classes. As a Crusader, you'll be hard-pressed to find a group that will be willing to try to push for leaderboard positions with you on their team. And this leads us to the meta. Some of you already know what I mean by that. Some of you may have heard the term but don't quite understand it. When we say meta, we're talking about the meta game, using the Greek prefix meta, which means beyond, to refer to the game beyond the game. If you were to play Diablo 3 as a single-player experience, never once joining a public game or playing with anyone but your follower, and never reading any forums, Reddit, watching YouTube videos or streams, or otherwise gathering any other knowledge about the game other than what you experience within the game itself, I guarantee you that your experience will be drastically different from the majority of the active player base. And that's because of the meta game. This encompasses the culture of the game, the zeitgeist of the community. Because a popular streamer tops a leaderboard with a monk, lots of people play monk. Because Diablo fans or YouTube popularizes a build, lots of people play a certain build. Because Reddit and the forums talk about certain tactics and methods, lots of people start using them. Because in-game communities are built around certain activities, people partake in those activities. Because people observe unspoken cultural norms in-game, they then adopt and propagate that culture. All of this, the metagame, constitutes what is popular and accepted by the community. So, if the metagame says that the highest Greater Rift pushing groups consist of three monks and a barbarian, then your options are embrace the metagame, embrace what is popular with the community, or take your ball and go home. Now, this doesn't mean that you can't have fun in Diablo unless you play the meta. This doesn't mean that you can't find cool people who don't care if you don't play the meta. In fact, for most Diablo players, it doesn't really matter whether or not you play the meta. But if you want to take Diablo very seriously, 
if you want the top leaderboards, if you want to have the entirety of the game's experience open to you without restriction, then you need to play the meta. If you don't meet their criteria, the cool kids won't let you join their Greater Rift pushing group. And as far as being the best at Greater Rifting goes, if we can agree that the ultimate pursuit in Diablo 3 is the never-ending acquisition of increasing power, then Greater Rifting is the only activity that allows you to do that most efficiently. Not only is Greater Rifting the best way to level up your Paragon, which translates into greater power, but it is the only way to level up your legendary gems. Classes that are best at pushing Greater Rifts will be able to accumulate more power more rapidly than classes that dominate at Speed Rifts or other activities. So, back to the data. What does it tell us? Well, this data first came to my attention in the form of an infographic that was passed around about a month ago, created by at MonstrousD3. He wanted to show the class representation in leaderboard grifting groups across all seasons. And the immediate and clear takeaway is that Season 4 has the worst spread of any season. But one key point was that the season was still young, just under a month old when he posted the data, whereas the data from the other seasons was taken at the end of the season. So the hope was that class representation might balance out a little more toward the end of the season. Today, we are about two months into Season 4, and we have seen some shifts in the data, but the situation has not improved. In fact, it's gotten worse. Barbarians are no longer the most popular class, but now monks are even more popular than barbarians were a month ago. The reason for this specific shift seems to revolve around a new dual generator monk build that originated from the Chinese servers a couple weeks back. And this goes to show just how volatile the meta can be. One new build can shift the balance of class distribution. However, that build was for a class that was already dominating in popularity. Monks were distinctly in second place and almost as popular as barbarians. The odds of us seeing a new Crusader build emerge to top the leaderboards are slim, partly because there aren't a lot of top players trying to push the leaderboards with Crusaders, because they aren't part of the meta, and so they never become part of the meta. It's a self-perpetuating problem. So at this point, it's fair to say that Season 4 will likely end with a similar data distribution as we're seeing now. Monks and Barbarians will dominate, with the other classes having a scarce presence. So why is Season 4 so out of whack? Why did the previous three seasons see better distribution among the classes? Well, the greatest change from Season 3 to Season 4, something that fundamentally altered the way groups push higher grifts, was a nerf to the game's crowd control mechanics. Previously, you could effectively permanently keep monsters under crowd control effects, stopping them from hurting you. The group play meta was then to have some people in your party dedicated to stopping the monsters from ever touching you, while the others brought the damage. Let's take a look at how every class has progressed from season to season, and how the crowd control nerf has affected things for season 4. We'll group these data into two gross categories, solo play and group play. If you take a look at the trend in the data, you'll actually note that from season 1 to season 3, we saw an overall improvement in distribution with Season 3 seeing the best distribution. Let's start with the Demon Hunter, who seemed to have been Blizzard's favored child for a very long time, seeing great representation in group play and solo play. They were the strongest damage dealing class, and arguably, they used to be the quote-unquote best class. But now, in Season 4, they no longer exist, neither in group play nor solo play. Onto the Wizard, a class that seems like it was only introduced in Season 3. Yes, Seasons 1 and 2 did see some solo Wizard play, but they were non-existent in groups until Season 3 introduced the revised Talrasha set that made them viable damage dealers, competitive with Demon Hunters. Suddenly, if you wanted a damage dealer on your team, your option was no longer Demon Hunter or Demon Hunter. However, just like the Demon Hunter, the Wizard has been phased out of group play, and is now holding on to a sliver of the pie in solo play, as it always has. The Wizard has always been, by these statistics, Blizzard's unloved bastard child. On to the Witch Doctor, which was always a strong crowd control class from Seasons 1 through Season 3, thanks to the utility that it brought to a team. But it became obsolete in its crowd control role for Season 4. However, it did become a strong DPS option, a strong damage dealing class. 
Unfortunately, the meta did not embrace the Witch Doctor because of issues with it causing server lag, and so it's seeing smaller representation than it otherwise could. Still, it has gained a foothold in solo play, more than it's ever had before, and holds on to a sliver in group play. Which takes us to another former support class, the Crusader. Like the Witch Doctor, it had solid representation in group play from Seasons 1 to 3. The ideal party composition was two Demon Hunters, a Witch Doctor, and a Crusader. With Season 3 allowing you to swap one Demon Hunter for a Wizard. Crusaders even held a respectable piece of the pie in solo play. But without their strong crowd control abilities being as useful anymore, Crusaders have gone extinct. Next, we have the Barbarian, a class that never before really had a strong role in group play, but was always strong in solo play. The Barb started out as the dominant solo class, but it's been on a steady decline over time and is currently actually holding a piece of the pie as large as every class ideally should. This season, they've hit group play in a big way, initially being the favored class and now settling into a secondary role. The Monk has seen a similar journey, seeing solid solo play representation in the past but being largely absent from groups. Now, they dominate. So why is it that the two classes that never had a strong presence in group play are now basically the only classes in group play and solo play? It all comes down to the crowd control nerf. The Monk and the Barbarian were never weak classes, but because they couldn't put out the same amount of damage as Glass Cannon Demon Hunters and couldn't crowd control like Crusaders or Witch Doctors, they didn't have a place in the meta. Blizzard kept trying to bring these two classes into the meta by buffing them patch after patch, giving them new powerful builds and items, but that was always eclipsed by other classes that could either stop the enemies from hurting your party entirely, or be able to just focus purely on dealing damage with zero regard for toughness. These buffs to the Monk and Barbarian continued into Season 4, and with the removal of hard crowd control, we're now seeing just how strong the Monk and Barbarian truly are, and always were. These continued buffs have been unnecessary, and they are now far over-tuned. So, where does that leave us? Well, the crowd control nerf resulted in the single greatest shift in the meta that we have seen since the introduction of Seasons. And this has thrown the entire balance out of whack. No one could have predicted the effect this would have had on the meta. And while things may seem grim right now, there's actually a lot to be hopeful for, and a lot of good that has come from this. First off, the nerf to crowd control has resulted in a more interesting game. While there certainly is some novelty in just permanently stopping a monster from damaging you, you'll have to agree that that definitely isn't the way Blizzard envisioned us playing the game, and that it's much more boring to shoot at targets that can't fight back. New support builds have emerged, but they revolve around buffing and healing more so than crowd control, requiring more dynamic and engaging play. Secondly, while we're seeing less variety in class distribution, we're seeing classes in the group meta that we've never seen before. So if you mained a Demon Hunter for the past three seasons, then at least you got to try something new this season. Next, while there is less variety in class distribution, there is greater variety in builds than ever before. This is thanks to the introduction of Kanai's Cube, which is arguably the best thing to happen to this game since patch 2.0. Even among monks and barbarians, depending on the role you want to play in the party, you have a few builds to select from. And this leads us to the most promising note of them all. Now that crowd control is nerfed, Blizzard can start the real balancing game. They now know that the other classes need to be buffed relative to the Barbarian and Monk, and Season 5 will certainly see some improvements in that area. If we can retain the build diversity that we see in Season 4 and add in some greater class diversity through continued balancing efforts, Season 5 is poised to be Diablo's greatest season yet. That wraps up this video. Thanks for watching. Leave a comment letting me know what you think the best class is and your thoughts on Season 4. Check out these other videos, and if you enjoyed this one, share with friends, leave a comment, hit like, and subscribe to join Rikers Raiders.